Evans, Pastor Bill Evans, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church, and uh, glad to be part of Chet TV Ministries, Christian Ministries, where we put up the story of uh, God and His love and His care for uh, His people uh, in the world. Um, we uh, have just uh, been taping these messages, and Marlon's been a big thing of that, so we're really thankful for that opportunity. This morning, I, today I want to uh, consider some thoughts uh, about, in our communion service, we always very often read the text from 1 Corinthians where Paul says, uh, talks to the church at Corinth, which had some struggles about the Lord's table. And in there, he talks to them about straightening that mess out. But he, he, he then quotes Jesus being at the Lord's table and uh, that Last Supper when he said to his disciples, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And Jesus was telling his disciples he was doing something new. The Old Testament's full of all kinds of interesting things. If you read Leviticus and Numbers and whatever, there's just all these laws, laws, piled upon laws, upon, upon laws, and you had to do this and do all this kind of things. And um, uh, he says, I'm going to do something new. And I, I just want us to, in our time together today, share a few thoughts about that. Um, the new covenant in my blood, let's consider it. And the first thing is that Old Testament, Old Covenants and New Covenants, they all had a, some things in, in, uh, uh, in very similar elements of the covenants. They all had death. Death was a part of the covenant in that God said in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, and he says, you can eat of all the trees of the garden, anything you want, but do not touch the one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He says, netushpa, I told my grand, taught my grandkids, taught my kids, netushpa, do not touch. Because he says, the day you eat of that tree, you will die. And, uh, you know, the devil come along, we know the story how he deceived Eve. It's interesting when you read the New Testament, Eve was deceived, we're told, but Adam was not. Adam's response should have been you know, before instead of after. He should have said, God, this woman you gave me, you took out of my side. She, she took that fruit. What do we do? And then it's God's problem. But Adam ate the fruit too. And he ate and, and, and he died. And, and so in Adam all died, we're told. And, and so people are born in the world today with a heart that's away from and running away from God. Because he had snipped, like the umbilical cord, he had snipped the uh, relationship with God there. And he says, you'll surely die. The devil says, you're not going to really die. I don't believe that hooey. And that's the devil's lie today. He tells people all the time, don't believe that. That's a, don't, that alcohol won't wreck your marriage. That alcohol won't put you in jail and get Pastor Bill to guard you. That will not happen. You will not get a drunk driving charge. That doesn't happen. It's the devil's lie. And he throws it out there all the time to anybody who will, he can get in front of or whatever. And then Romans 6.23, Paul says, The wages of sin is death, separation from God. And uh, you, you just, you know, uh, people say, well, that's nothing, separation from God. Oh, it's very serious. It's not coffee and down at A&W with your friends. It's not that. It's, it's separation from God and it's terrible. In Hebrews 9, the New Testament, tying in about covenants, it says without the re, uh, there was no uh, remission of sin without the shedding of blood. And that's where the wages of sin was death. So when Adam and Eve sinned, what happened? We know the story. God killed sheep and made skins for them, covered them with skins because they said, we're naked. That was the first thing come up to their head. Isn't that strange? That we're naked. And, and here we are standing before our God that comes and meets us every day in the, in the, in the cool of the day in the garden, and we, we have to hide and put on fig leaves and whatever. And uh, so he says, we're naked and, and whatever. And God, who told you you were naked? Did you touch that fruit? And, and, and animals had to die to cover up for Adam and Eve because, no, they were conscious about something and they wanted to be covered up. Animals died. No remission of sin without the shedding of blood. So that's the first elements of the covenant, that there's, there's death is, is involved and the blood has to be a part of that death and whatever. So, you know, the um, Bible talks about don't eat animals that are uh, strangled. So people, a lot of people, they eat rabbits that are snared. I, I just can't get my head around that myself and whatever. I've got to take the blood out of them. The elements of both the covenants that we have then is, is interesting. In Leviticus 17, uh, he talks there about what this uh, is important. And the thing about the, the covenants, the plan always is to bring atonement. And that is a very interesting word. In verse 17 of uh, 1711 here, we have this statement. It says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. The word atonement is reconciliation. When you're doing your books in the income tax season or whenever you're doing your books, the, the accountant has to reconcile all the receipts you give them 
to uh, make sure uh, you paid the right tax. That reconciliation idea, when you're at odds with your wife or at odds with your neighbor or whatever, you want to get oneness together again, that is the same word that is used here, the word atonement. And if you cut it up like the word together, uh, we can uh, do stuff together or we can do stuff against her and just to get her, we can do it otherwise. And the word atonement is at one -ment. And God wants to bring us at one -ment to himself in relationship with him. And he says to do that, sin has to be dealt with. Something has to die. And so he, in the Old Testament, they killed their, their sacrifices, their, their sheep and their lambs and their oxen, and all those animals died. And, and it says, but the plan was just to bring them at one with God. Well, way over at Paul's again in uh, Romans chapter 5, he makes an interesting statement about some of these things. And um, uh, let me just find it here. Romans 5, and verses 9 and 10. And, and he says there, he says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, God doesn't wait for us to get good. And then he says, Okay, now I'll give you my son as a sacrifice. He says, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he says, uh, as, as much more than having now been justified, just as if I'd never sinned by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled or atoned, at, made at one with God uh, through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And so when God came and sent Christ to die for our sins, he looked and he saw that Bill Evans, this man right here. Uh, this man right here, he had no hope of being finding forgiveness, killing enough animals to cover my sin. And the animals didn't deserve to die to cover my sin, but that was what God said an animal would die. And it was a, a principle he said to do. But he had a plan. And the covenant was to make atonement for my sin. And animals were used. Well, now he comes to a new situation. But atonement was the big issue. And how much more, if Christ dies for our sin, how much better will that be for us? The next thing, is, the part that uh, the, the elements of the both covenants is faith. Hebrews 11.6 makes this statement. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. God says, if you don't believe I'm there, sorry, I can't help you. I won't help you. He can help you, and whatever. And what he does lots of times, he cuffs you on the side of the ear, and he says, and you look, well, who did that? And you find out it was God. And he's trying to get your attention. And he wants to speak to your heart. And he wants you, and he, and he puts Christians that sit in your way and, and tell you about uh, the work of God in, 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 a, in a person's life. There's an interesting movie being played out there now and um, uh, different names. Lots of good Christian movies out there. When the story is the same, God comes to them, wakes them up and says, Hey, I'm God. I want you to follow me. And uh, uh, my, I'm 14 years old when that happened in my life. And God very specifically poked me, like not with his finger, but he poked me like all like he did. And he says, Bill, you're not on the right path. 14-year-old boy. And so, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So then Hebrews 3 makes this statement about Moses. Moses was faithful in all his house. Faithful in all his house. He, he did what God told him to do. And you know, that's the important thing about um, of trying to find the, the faith relationship with God and his covenants. Is it's simple obedience. God wants you to trust him. For faith, somebody said, the idea is, forsaking all, I trust him. Trust him what? That his word is true, that he is really there. That when I stand before him one day, um, he, he's not going to say, sucker sucks to be you, I, it was all a lie, Bill. I don't believe that. I've had too many things ever go uh, right for me to say that my God that I believe in and worship is not real. And uh, uh, I had a friend ask me that one, do you really believe this is true, Pastor Bill? Yeah, I really do. Otherwise, I lie to myself. Forsaking all, I trust him. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And so in Exodus 40, verse 16, God makes this statement, Moses did everything I commanded him. And that's what God simply asks us to do. Take my word, read my word, do what I tell you. Take my word, believe my word, obey my word. And obedience is the big part of it. And if we don't do that, uh, what's obedience? Uh, without being don't, doing what you were told to do. And so um, the elements of the both covenants is, is they want to make an atonement, a reconciliation between the two parties, and that takes faith with, uh, that the blood of, the, uh, blood of something has to happen in order for my sin to be dealt with. There's some elements in contrast in this. The problem in Hebrews 11 talks about the problem with the old covenant was this. The priest had to keep changing. I'm just announced that I'm, I'm retiring soon. I just turned 70 and I've uh, been in Chetwin 35 years and it has been a wonderful ride. And guess what? I'm not leaving. 
I'm sticking around here unless God writes it down real plain. I got to do something else. I'm here. Uh, I, I'm going to go west of town when I'm done. And my son says, where's that? I said, the cemetery. And uh, that's my plan. In the old covenant, the priest had to keep changing. God said, we've got to do something about that. And he had a plan in place all the time. There was sacrifices. Uh, they were, the Lord says, you know, your, your sacrifices, they're the same old ones. They just keep coming around and coming around, same old one. And the problem wasn't with the sacrifice. The problem was with the heart. People forgot to keep their heart involved in it. And, and so he says these same old sacrifices. But he says in, in Hebrews 10, verse 4, the blood of bulls and goats could never cleanse sin. And one of my professors at seminary used to say, it was like the credit card charge. And uh, Marlon's got a new wife there, and, and she has his credit card, and she just, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. And at the end of the month or whatever, he has to pay the bill. The cha-ching, cha-ching in the Old Testament was Jesus was coming to pay the bill. Jesus was coming to pay the bill. And so the blood of bulls and goats, they were just a, just a credit charge thing. But Jesus was coming. And in Hebrews 10, verse 12, uh, we're, we're told there that there was going to be one sacrifice for sin forever. So all the sacrifice of animals stops. And it's because Jesus died. And there he tells us there um, that, that one sacrifice for sin forever is, uh, it puts the end of all the animal sacrifices for our sin. It says, but he having offered one sacrifice for sins for all, and what's really important after he's done that sacrifice, we just celebrated Easter here recently, by having offered one sacrifice for sins for all, for all, he sat down at the right hand of God. He sat down, finished work, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. The scriptures tell us in other places what he's doing sitting there. He prays for me as I'm taping this ministry and the other pastors are taping. He prays for Marlon and company as they run the show and whatever to put out a Christian message of the gospel uh, in, a, in a world of hurting people. And um, he, um, he, he sits there praying for us. Um, the, the, the contrast of there is his sacrifice has is, is got the, the same old ones, whatever. It, the old ones were weak and useless. They weren't really accomplishing what we said because of that charge with the, with the credit card. And there was nothing complete. They, they couldn't make anything complete. They just kept on looking forward. Something was coming and uh, we were, something was coming and better. Um, Hebrews 9.15. You can look these verses up yourself and that's always good to do. Hebrews 9.15. Jesus was the mediator of a better covenant. What was coming, the new was better. Because again, you didn't have to pay all the slaughter of the animals and all that kind of stuff. And in that first sacrifice, this is what was said. He made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the very righteousness of God in him. Paul sums up his situation with the relationship of the covenants, where he quotes Jesus saying, I'm going to make a new covenant in my blood. And Paul summed up his life with this statement as I close. 1 Corinthians 2.2. 2, and he says, I want to know nothing among you, as a preacher of the gospel in a community, and my hope has been here in Chetwin, is that I've known nothing but Christ Jesus and Him crucified. We can't get to heaven. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. And so we need to know that. And uh, nothing, I know nothing among people except Christ Jesus and that He was crucified for Bill Evans' sin. Because Bill Evans had sin he couldn't deal with. Animals, the blood of bulls and goats wasn't going to do it. Jesus did it on my behalf. Amen. May God bless our hearts with those thoughts. Thank you.